Hello YouTube, my name is Bruno and today we are going to talk about server-side rendering using Next.js. One of the first questions that you may ask is, why do we even need server-side rendering? Isn't Create React App good enough? Well, it is if you don't care about SEO, search engine optimization. But if you start to care about that or if you start to care about the fact that your user will see a white screen or a blank screen for the first three to four seconds when your application reloads, well, you probably want to consider server-side rendering because your user will have immediately something to see on the screen. That's called a fast, first meaningful paint or first contentful paint. If you want to know more about those subjects, this blog post from Google is quite good. So you can read them through and understand quite clearly what those subjects are. Okay, in order for us to start, let's come to our console and we have create next app. And this is really similar to create react app. The only difference is that we will create a server side rendering application. So for me, the name of that project will be YouTube 2020 Fab and Next.js. Now it will start to install React, React DOM and Next itself. It will take roughly three to four minutes in my network. So I will just fast forward this for you. Now that it finished, we can see that Next.js printed some helpful messages. For example, it teaches us how to run our application in dev mode, how to build and run our application in production mode, for example. So with that in mind, we will go inside our application folder and open that with our editor. And you will see that Next created three folders for us. One, which is the public folder, and this is the folder where we have, for example, our favicon, okay? And then we have two more folders, one called components and another one called pages. So we can come here and just delete them, okay? And you are probably asking, why are we deleting them? Well, because I want to show you completely from scratch how you can create routing in an XJS. And for that, let's create by calling source to one of our folders. And now we will create another folder called pages. Okay. And this, this name is a configuration from Next.js. Every single file you put inside pages will become a route. Okay. So this is a file system based route. Contrary to, for example, React Router, where you have the switches and things like that, in here it will go by the file system. So, for example, if we create a file called index.js, okay, and we export this file, export function uh, index, okay, and we do return h1 index page, okay. In Next.js, we have just one simple rule here, which is the component we export needs to be a default component. And so you have two options or you put it here, okay? Or you do export default of index. I prefer the first one just because it's simpler, but you can use the second one if you prefer, okay? So creating this, you can also notice that I don't need to have import react from react, okay? Because Next.js is using bubble to put that for us automatically. So we don't need to repeat ourselves over and over again. Now let's use the configuration that Next put here. So npm run dev. So let's just do dev. It will start our dev server and we can validate if this route here will be our index folder here or not. So let's just open our browser, okay? And do localhost 3000, for example, okay? And 3000 is the default port uh, from Next.js and we can see Yes, we have the index page here. So going back to our editor, let's create just another static route. And let's say that this static route is for example, details. Oops, not details, details.js, okay? So let's do exactly the same thing. Export default function details, okay? Return h2 details, okay? and. As you may imagine now, instead of being the root of our uh, URL, it will be slash details. So let's go back to our browser and let's do slash details. And now we will have details page, okay? 
One last static route before we go to dynamic routes, because as you can see, uh, static routes are quite easy. So let's say that we have a page where we have not car, but we have, for example, vehicle. And let's say that we have a person name. In this case, it will be, for example, my name. Okay. So let's do export default, oops, not default, default function Bruno, for example. Okay. Let's do return a div, not a div, let's say h2 because that way i don't need to zoom my browser for you to see and i will say bruno scar okay bruno scar we save that one and now as you may imagine we will have slash vehicle slash bruno okay so it's quite easy for us to do routing in a in next.js okay and this one is there so static routing is just a breeze but that's probably not as useful as it could be the useful thing is for us to receive, instead of vehicle, we can have a car or a bike or an airplane, whatever Bruno owns, okay? So let's say that instead of receiving a completely static, um, a completely static name, that vehicle, we put these square brackets and those square brackets are telling Next.js that that bit is a variable called vehicle in our URL and it's dynamic, it will change. So let's do the same thing here. Instead of calling it Bruno, let's call it person, okay? So let's also change this one just for consistency. Oops, person. This is just for consistency, okay? And then Bruno is still here, but I will change it in a second. So if we go to our browser and we say vehicle Bruno, or if we say car John, we should go to the exact same page because we have a dynamic routing now, okay? Now, from this dynamic routing, how can I read the parameters from the URL? It's easy as well. So let's do import use router from next slash router. Okay. So this is just a React hook. So we can do router equals to use router. Okay. And just for simplicity, let's say that we have router and router has something called query. So all the parameters that we are having, for example, vehicle and person will be inside this query. Okay. Just to validate that, let's go to our browser. Let me open the development tools. And now you can see that vehicle is car, as you can see in the first parameter, and the person is John. So if I do, instead of John, if I do Bruno, for example, after the browser refreshes, I can see that the vehicle is still car, but the person is now Bruno. Okay, so we can already start to update our, our um, application here. So instead of being Bruno, we can say query.person. So this is the person's car. And because we don't have only cars, we can already do this, dot vehicle, okay? We can delete our console log because it's no longer needed. Okay, and let me just show you one more thing about this routing before we go to navigate to these pages, to the navigation, to the links, okay, the anchor tags. So if I refresh here, okay, you will see that is Bruno's car, okay? Let's just say John, and let's say that's an airplane, for example, okay? So John's airplane, it's there. And I deleted this console log, but I shouldn't because I want to show one more thing here. So if I come here and I have query parameters, so for example, query one equals to uh, Monica, which is my girlfriend. So we can say that now the query one has Monica. But if I say something like and query one equals to someone else, someone else, okay? Now we can see that we have an array in query, okay? So we received Monica and someone else. Well, this is good, right? So if we have more than one, we will receive an array. If we just have one, we will receive just the single property. So this is quite useful for us, right? Going back here, we mastered <laughs> the, the routing in Next.js. So the thing we need now is to navigate to these pages we created because we are just going to our browser and putting the URLs there.
no user will be doing that, right? So in order to navigate, for example, from details to our person, let's just remove these and say that we have a link, okay? And oops, not like that. Let's just import because we are using JavaScript. So next slash link, oops, not link, ah. <laughs> so link, okay? And this will probably look similar if you did the React Router. So we will have navigate to Bruno's car, okay? And now you are probably tempted to do one of two things and both will not work as you may expect. Probably doing car slash Bruno, right? Is one of the options that you would probably do. And the other one will be to do something like this, okay? None of them will work. And I will just show you what happens, okay? So let's just open our browser again and go to our details page, okay? And now let's see what's happening. I have that URL here, uh, sorry, that anchor tag there, and that anchor tag says car Bruno. So when I click, I should just navigate there. But look at what will happen here, and you will see that it will be a full page reload. Okay, let me click. You see, we completely fully reloaded that page. That's not what we want by any means. We want a SPA, a single page application, right? We want to navigate and the router to do that transition. Okay, so what we can do here in Next is there is a has parameter here. And the as parameter in reality will have what you are used to pass to an href and the href will have the template of your routing. So if you come back to our pages folder, the template of our routing will be vehicle slash person. So we will do the square brackets. Don't forget the square brackets, okay? And person, okay? If I don't put these square brackets, for example, see what happens. We will have a problem. Going back to our browser, did it refresh? We can force the refresh just to make sure. And now when we click, nothing happens, okay? And you can see that the console is even triggering some errors. Okay, and the reason is because Next can't match that template, that href template to any route uh, in the system, right? So let's put, oops, wrong place. Let's put the square brackets back. And now we have that template matching exactly what we have here. So it should just work. So let's just refresh, go back to our elements, just for you to see that the page doesn't have a full refresh or a full reload and clicking here, as you see, the only thing that changed was the body. There was not a full reload. Next router took care of it. So that's exactly what we wanted. The, the last thing that I think we may need from the next router is for us to do dynamic routing, even though this is not from next, this is our code, but it's probably something that you may be asking. So let me just create people. It's an array of people and we will have a V, which is the vehicle, let's say car, and we will have name, which is the person's name. So let's have three people. It's just good enough. Okay. So we will have, oops, car, bike, and airplane. Good enough, right? Bruno, John, and Mick. I don't know if we pronounce it Mick or Mike, whatever, Mick for now. So in here, we need to just change this. So we will have, oops, we will have, instead of having a normal string, we will have our famous back quotes. Okay, so string templates. And here we will just do the following. So people, oops, people dot map. And now we will receive the element. Okay. And from that element, we are going to return this bit. Okay. And so, Let's keep E and he, let's put E dot V, which is the vehicle. And in the name, let's put dollar E dot name. Okay. We can also change this here because it makes sense for us to change this here. So E dot name and E dot vehicle. Okay. And now we will have completely dynamic um, 
a completely dynamic uh, routing system, right? So imagine that you were receiving this from an API endpoint or some other place. So you can now navigate dynamically. And the only thing you need to do is to have some uh, string literals or string templates. I never know how, how it's called. But now if we go to details again, you will see that we have three URLs, even though they look bad. Let's just make them look better before we click in them. <laughs> so let's just put, for example, a div just to force them to go to the next page. Okay. Let's delete this dov. Okay. Now they are in different pages, so we can navigate to Bruno's car. We can navigate to John's bike and we can navigate to mix airplane. Everything you need from routing, I think it's here in this bit, right? So by now you should have a good understanding how the Next.js router works. I should just warn you for one last thing. If you remember, I told you that every single file you have inside pages will be a route to the outside. So imagine you have this, a unit test for index.spec.js. So these specs are usually uh, files that we want to keep to ourselves. We don't want to open a route out of it, right? But if you come to our page now and we call it index.spec, now that thing is an open route, even though it will fail, but it's an open route. If you don't mind about this, then you are good to go. But if you care about this, usually what I do is all my components, okay, that should be exposed in routes and know about the router. So we do the const router equals to use router. I usually put them inside a containers folder. So let's say that we will do that only for the index. Let's call it home page, home page dot spec, uh, sorry, dot JS. And let's do export function home page and return h1 as uh, hello. Okay, so this is our home page. And in order for us to use our home page, we will come here and we will do import home page from containers, oops, with and Bruno, container slash home page. Okay, now we just need to, to export it as default. Export um, default home page. Okay, so doing that now, our index folder is now our home page. And I can now come here, add the unit tests I want, or even adding any helper functions, and they will not be exposed in my pages. So my pages will become just the routing, nothing else, okay? So we can delete this one from here because we already have an onpage.spec.js. And it even has the benefit of, if you want to use the same component in more than one route, for example, imagine that you want your clients to go to example.com and example.com slash homepage. And you want to show exactly the same thing. You don't want to redirect, you just want to show the exact same thing. So you can come here, homepage.js. And so we can come here and do the following. So now going back, we will have an home page here. Okay, home page here. Okay, so with this home page, you are just fine. Everything will just work. The the router for me, it's it's quite easy in Next.js. Okay, it's super easy for you to add new routes, to check the parameters from routes. It's super super easy. So next week, we will take care of the asynchronous operations in Next.js. For example, doing HTTP calls in your server, rendering that component and sending that component back to the client or the client, your browser, okay? So if you want to, to watch the second part of this tutorial, please subscribe to the channel and I hope to see you next week. Bye-bye.